Hello, Texans. I'm Susanna, and this is The Susanna Gibbs Show. I've been fortunate enough to have two careers over the past 25 years. I've been an actress and producer in Texas and surrounding states, and I've also been an insurance agent, and which is a really interesting mix of art and business. But what they have in common is a good story. We hear so many good stories. And so that's a lot of what you're going to hear on this podcast. We're going to talk to artists. We're going to talk to entrepreneurs. We're going to talk to idealists, the hows, the whys, how you get up again, even when all seems lost, which has all the makings of a good story. And we're going to end this podcast with an insurance tip of the week because the insurance agency sponsors this whole thing. So it's a beautiful thing. On the show with me today is Sharonda Green. She is a private investigator. She has so many good stories. We couldn't even get to them all. She's a lady investigator, which is not important. You should not put lady in front of investigator, but it kind of makes her cooler. And it 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 activates this inner kid. Um, I don't know if you guys played the game where you and a buddy sneak around corners until you finally find each other with your fake handguns or whatever it was that you had. But she does it for real, which is pretty exciting. And in other news, it's 67 degrees here. So if you're in Texas, get your sweaters. Puffy jackets are next. And now, on with the show. On the podcast with me today, Sharonda Green, entrepreneur and private investigator, lady private investigator, which you don't necessarily need lady in front of it, but that you are a female private investigator makes you so stinking cool. (laughs) Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I'm going to bet that if there were a female investigator club in Dallas, how many people would be in it? Do you know many other female investigators? I mean, personally, uh, no, I don't know them personally. Have I heard of? Yes, there are a few. A lot of them are in Houston. I can tell you that there are 12% of women PIs. Interesting. Why are Mm -hmm. they all in Houston? I don't know. Houston is probably where the money is, I guess. I don't know. But a lot of them are in Houston. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of them are. So how is it that you became a private investigator? Uh, well, first I started because I wanted to do financial investigation. Uh, my career is always. And what's been... financial investigation? So, financial investigation is um, uh, when companies call you out to. Well, sometimes it's personal, but more more likely the companies will call you out and comb through their records because they're about to get an audit and they want to make sure that they have everything correct. Some people call them out for um, sales or acquisitions to make sure that the sale was legit because you have so many days to uh, make sure that everything is what it's supposed to be before the sale is final. So even after you get the million dollar check, you still have 80 days to check to make sure that the seller didn't lie about anything. So now you have total and complete access of that business. So now you send out an investigator to figure it out. So were you, what was your life before you were a private investigator? Were you an accountant? A financial analyst. So the investigator, right. So the investigator sends the analyst out. So what the analyst does, we go, we come through, we are the, the runts. That's who we are. Okay. We go, the, the investigate, the financial investigators pulls together a team of analysts. And this is the new acquisition. This is the new business. This is what's going on. This is what I need you to find out. And everything is on commissions. So they send us out the runs and do the work. So we comb through the paperwork to find out, oh, this this didn't make it, this didn't go together, this didn't work, or this was a lie, or whatever the case may be. Um and so that's what I used to do. I just I used to either I used to work with a lot of brokers. I used to work with a lot of um a lot of So you don't have a law enforcement background. None. Just an analyst. None. But you carry a gun. Or you yes. can carry a gun, right? I can. Mm-hmm. And I do, do you carry one all the time? All the time. Oh, God, you're so fancy. You're so it's cool. Fun. So anyway, I do everything but financial investigation. I just got out of the field, period, altogether. 
But I still have my so analytical they, brain, and that's what helps me in the field. So what is the dumbest thing that people say to you <laughs> all the time? As far as, because there's a lot, but as far as what? <laughs> <laughs> About what they think you do. Because, of course, the the stakeout has been filmed in movies, I don't know, mm-hmm. about 40,000 times and it's been dramatized and, mm-hmm. you know, people are in the car forever. Mm-hmm. And yeah, um, all of that is true. But the dumbest thing I've ever, well, the craziest thing or the one that I, I'm starting to laugh at now because it used to upset me is, oh my God, can I be on a stakeout with you? Why do you think all PIs are on stakeouts? My stakeout is behind the computer. And and so they either, I'm, either they think I just do infidelity or they think um, I do things like cheaters. That's the first thing to people's mind. Che- the first thing. When you say PI, cheaters. Automatically. Cheaters. That's what they think. Cheaters. No, I don't do that. <laughs> None do of you that. ever do like infidelity cases or is it just do, super rare? I do infidelity cases. I don't do the surveillance. I'm a woman. I need a bath. I need to use the bathroom. I need tissue to use the bathroom. I don't want to sit with urine in my car. I am a woman. I cannot be out there for four days and I haven't washed nothing. No, no. I learned real quick. That was not for me. So I tried, so, but I, not for me. So the whole thing is you don't leave the car. Uh, no. So when you're on a surveillance, the surveillance I did, she was a hermit, but she did go out. But if a hermit is in, always in the house or in someone's house, you're going to be right there all the time. Like when she goes to the grocery store, it's 20 minutes. So that means I got 20 minutes to try to do whatever. You can't lose sight of this person. So I have 20 minutes to do whatever she's doing to get something to eat and shop with her and try to do all this stuff in 20 minutes because she's in the house all day. So there's no chance to go anywhere and move anywhere because she's in the house all day. So mm. you have to sit there. Yeah, stakeouts. So- sound even less fun than they did before. Some people live for it. Some people absolutely live for it. They have all kinds of tricks and gadgets and moonshines. And I I promise you, it is a man's job. (laughs) (laughs) I wouldn't give that to any woman. No, no. So do you work with partners ever? I do. I have a great team. I actually have a great team, but uh, my partner, uh, he is law enforcement. He is actually uh, um, law enforcement in McKinney. JT, I call him my bulldog. He's the one that's over security. And he is the one that I'm the brains. He's the, that's how we say, that's how we call each other. So when you go out, are you ever like, all right, this could be ugly. This could be violent. I got to bring JT with me just Um, to make sure. No, we pretty much sum that up when we get the cases in, what's violent and what's not. We can figure that out. I haven't had anything where I can say it has been a violent case. Again, I don't go out. I'm the worst PI. I'm the cyber. I'm, I'm the one that's in the dark web. I can find out access to your uh, all your passwords, to all your accounts. Like currently right now, I'm working on one. She thinks she's been hacked. Well, uh, I guarantee you she's not. It's just someone with her passcode. And since she mm. hasn't changed it in the last nine years, I'm almost positive it's someone with your password. Okay. But she thinks so she's been hacked. Since, so you're the smart. Right. I'm the brain. Beautiful <laughs> PI doing the computer work. Yes. Uh, explain dark web because honestly, and you know, dark web is one of those things where I go to meetings about cyber insurance and cyber mm-hmm. liability and somebody sits up there and talks about the dark web and we all go, uh-huh, and look at uh, each other and go, do you what? know where the dark web is? How do we get there? <laughs> do we want to go there? Is it a place? <laughs> so. Well, let's simplify it. The dark, web okay. first, the dark web was first invented by the Navy. I know a lot of people don't know that. We invented it. So what it was, it was a, it was a web. It was a, it was a whole back of the scenes website for just them to communicate. So the allies couldn't know what they were, what was going on. Well, uh, very, that's the U S. And so, (laughs) (laughs) um, so someone thought it was a great idea to share it with the world. And that's what they did. They still use it. Uh, to communicate with each other, uh, because right, you can pause hide for it. just one second. Mm-hmm. Who do, do they know who shared it? 
yeah, no, no, but no. Uh, I know, okay. I know they don't know who shared it, but it's out there. And okay. so now with it being back there, they still use it to share information because you can hide by big, uh, with IP addresses. So people still use it to communicate because you can hide it very well. But anyway, the dark web is just turn this world upside down. If you go to Google, let's stay in our world because it's okay. another world. In our world, you can go to Google, Google your name, and I'll probably get every picture of every alumni or whatever it is that you've been in that's connected to your name. What I won't get is your social. And if I got your birthday, it won't be June 1st, 1972. It'll never be that way. It'll be June or June of 72, but it'll never give me all three. Uh, it won't give me um, in-depth information like your health care, like your health records. It won't give me that if I Google your name. Now let's flip the world. On the Sounds dark like, web. Do you ever watch Stranger Things? Yes. The upside Definitely. down. There it is. It's like the upside down. Right. So the things that you do here is all governed, all protected, all monitored. It's it's uh, we have that here. There is no governor. There is nothing in that world. Just like Stranger Things, there is nothing when you flip the world upside down. That's monitoring. That's that's making rules. None of that is over there. It's completely free range. How so, do you get there? So everyone can go to Tor. That's what it's called. Tor is called the Onion Router. So you get the on what? there. The what? The Onion Router. Tor, okay. T O R. So okay. you can get on there, but I advise that you do not use your own computer to get on there. Like, oh, I yeah, because then everybody's like, hey, there's a noob on here. Mm -hmm. We're going to take all, yes. everything. Everything. Uh. Just like you can see them, they can see you, and those are hackers. So never use your own. I have a separate computer that goes on to tour, and I have a separate email that's not connected to me. I think I'm Ralph something. And I have a, everything is separate, the separate internet line. I have a VPN, the firewalls. I have the whole thing going on on that laptop to make sure that my identity is not on there. So wow. if you're going to go to the dark web, anybody can get to the dark web. But remember, when you're back there, the world flips upside down. So if you Google yourself, you might find your social, your birthday, the entire birthday, your medical records, whatever information they took from this world. And use over in that world, everyone now has access to it. Are there people who you like, can you pay people now to be like, hey, I need you to scrub me from the dark web? You can, but it's hard. Interesting. Because yeah. it, it takes two seconds to share your information to millions of people. And wow. now you have to find those millions of people to get that information from. And every time you so see. When you go, mm -hmm. So when you go there. What are you, what are you trying to do when you go? So when I go there, usually it's a client that wants, like I have a financial one right now and um, he thinks that the wife has another bank account. He thinks that the wife uh, has a life insurance policy she's not talking about. And most people um, share a lot of information that they don't realize they're sharing. So I know if a hacker ever hacked in or if her information was ever shared, or how, how many, like, okay, let me ask you this. When was the last time you changed your password? Well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it depends. I have probably 350 different passwords for all the insurance okay. sites. So it depends on if they, they made me change it. But okay. uh, something super personal, probably not as much as I should. Okay. Even with the insurance side, do you always use the same password and change the numbers around or the letters around? So you meaning I use multiple the same password on multiple sites? Mm -hmm. No, I would I I would always do separate ones, so, Sharonda. But do you just because... change numbers or just change the letter or something? Right, that's how they get you. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that is how they get you. It's got you thinking, right? That's how they get you. Yeah. And no, it's 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 because we are creatures of habit. That's what humans are. We're creatures of habit. And so we're going to go with what's easy and what works and what gets us through the day and what passes us by, right? That's what we're doing. And so okay. a lot of us here in America and all around the world, we want what's easy. That's just who we are. But hackers like that because that mm -hmm. same password has me in your Gmail account. 
that same password has them in your health records. So if you're doing w, uh, web, WebMD and you're making your account and all your history and everything, yep, I can go in and get it from that same password you have that you keep using. Well, I generally consider my job to be like a little ray of pitch black, but that was a total ray of pitch black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you just yeah. got to be aware of what you're doing. That's all. The dark yeah. web is a very nasty place. It is. I see a lot of nasty stuff back there. I see children being sold, feet. All you got to do is like Google. Google feet back there and you'll see everything that comes up with feet, whether it's uh, dismemberment feet or it'd be little kids feet with pet polish on it. Um, I, I, I mean, it's a array of thought. When I tell you it's a, a lot, it's a lot back there. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that was a good explanation of what the dark web is. Probably the best one I've ever gotten. So really, thank I you. Although I'm terribly simple. frightened. <laughs> The upside down, the dark, you know, that helps for sure. Mm -hmm. So what's your favorite kind of job when somebody's like, Sharonda, mm -hmm. I've got a job for you. You're like, oh, I hope it's this. What is that? I love when I have to be the eye spy, meaning I have to be creative. I love when I can be creative with a case, anything that's going to have my brain thinking, not thinking like, uh, well, let's try this. But no, I want to be like, like when they say it can't be done, I'm her. I want to mm. prove to you that it can. And I've had one where it come in with a, uh, someone was supposed to be served. And uh, they said it was impossible. He had been running for six months. I was like, really? Hmm. Okay. And so I, I was able to get him served within about maybe two hours of them giving me the, um, the, the job because I'm a process server too. And so what I did was. So how did you find him? Well, they, when you're a process server, you're doing, that's what you're doing. You're serving paperwork from the courts. So it's like and in the so, movies, so and so you've been served. You served. Mm -hmm. Yes. You've been served. That's the one. And so I don't say that. Let's start there. Why not? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's just so cliche. Like you've been served. <laughs> no, I'm not doing all that. No, I, I'm not doing that. But it, it's really cliche. And so anyway, um, so what happened was I went and, and I, I said, okay, so he's an elder. I saw that. I know it's been hot outside. So I went and got, uh, soda. I went and got two cases of uh, water and uh, I said, okay, let's make sure he's hydrated. So I went to the door, I knocked on the door and I said, hey, and I called out, you know, hey, we're in the neighborhood, we're your community, we're checking on our elders. I brought everything and he was like, no, no, no. And I went on, walked back and grabbed another case. I heard him say no, but you know, he's behind the door. I really don't hear What him. was he like behind the door or something? Behind the door. It's telling me no, what are you, I don't get away. You know, he was like, just annoyed that I was there and it's fine. It's okay. I'm going to get this other case. Somebody got the other case and I brought it back and I said, whew, this is a long walk. And I said, and he said, what are you doing again? I said, well, we're with the community. We're trying to check on our elders. We're trying to make sure everybody's hydrated. We're trying to make sure you're okay. And then he opened, he cracked the door and he was talking to me and I said, I just have one more for you. He said, well, you really don't have to. I said, no, I have to. They told me to drop it off. So I went and got the third one and I came back and now I'm even more tired. So now I have to get, can I have one of your bottles of water, sir? He's on the outside of the door now. Nice. Nice, right? And so I get one of the water. So I said, thank you so much. And then he said, well, you, this is nice of you guys. This is really nice. I said, yeah. And then he said, you sure you're supposed to be giving it to me? I said, well, I don't know. So I called out his name. He said, yes. I said, and this is, and he said, yes. So now he's verified who, he's, who he is. By law, I don't need nothing else. I could drop the paper right there. I don't have to put it in his hand. But I wanted to put it in his hand just to see his face. So um, he wouldn't take the paper. I said, well, can I put it right here for you, sir? He said, yeah. So he let me know that I could put the paperwork right there on top of the water. He said, yes. I walked off. He picked it up. Are you kidding me? Yeah, you tried. You tried. You tried it. And so he was really mad. He was really, really mad. But it's okay. He got what? served. Can you say why he was served or no? No. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. But he got it. That was no right. Are people generally mad when they get served? Yes. No one wants oh. to know that they have. Some people don't know what it's for. You get some people like, oh, really? What do they want for me? I have no idea, but here you are. <laughs> and this is for people who are being, why are sued. they generally being served? You got you people being getting divorces. People are being sued. 
people are coming to court for auto accidents. They have, may have had an accident. Uh, I have to serve people. They had to come pick up checks. Um, it's it's an mm-hmm. array of, of whatever. Have you ever been scared for like that somebody was yes. going to come after you? Mm-hmm. Yes. I had a woman throw something at the door. I thought she shot. And legally, as a process server, you can't carry a gun. Now, I know I can't carry the gun to the door, but that didn't say I couldn't have it in my car. So um, she threw something at the door, and I literally thought that was a gunshot. That's how hard that thing hit the door. So yeah, oh, I was not going. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't go back to that one. That one. Now, when you have situations like that, that you can prove that they're there, that they, they are there, and uh, if you can prove that, then you can post it on the door. So, but the wow. ju- the judge has to order that. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So you get. Well, those. I know that you you occasionally take on some pro bono cases. I do, and that's I, one of I your know. passions, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the tell point us one of the of your... field. Yeah, I can do that. I that's the point of the field. Being in this field is because I want to service the community. Like I want to be the eyes, the voice, and the ears of people who can't speak. And so, with that, I'll tell you about a case that. The young, the, I'm going to call her a young lady. She's 83, which is, you know, but she's the young lady. I used to call her the that. young lady, I, the young lady. And so, um, you know, she needed help. And uh, most people uh, try to reach out to friends, family and things of that nature. At 83, she decided to reach out to her congregation. So she reached out to her church, told, told the church she was in trouble. Well, fortunately for her, her church had a P.I., me hello so uh and i tell people all the time if you don't know a pi you should take my car take my number you never know when you'll need me uh it's the smallest thing so fortunately for this 83 year old woman that was in a nursing home who needed help she reached out to her church and said she needed help she said that she had been put in there on uh, without um wanting to be there by a certain individual and that she wanted to leave and she couldn't leave because a certain individual had a POA, which is a power of attorney. So, um, so I said, well, and she's supposed to be incompetent, but I didn't understand if she's incompetent, how was she competent enough to write her church and let her know she was mm-hmm. in trouble? That's what piqued my interest. So we, I went over there with one of the church members and we went competent, very competent. Like she held the conversation. She, she I truly was good. And she remembered everything we said within two hours. We were, what was an hour and a half we were there. So I said, okay. So I picked the case up. And uh, moral of the story is she's home. It was all mm-hmm. a lie. She is home. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. So, but if she didn't have a PI in her pocket or the church didn't have a PI in their pocket, she'll still be there, still be suffering, and still be on the fraudulent of, of stay and it's like at 83 you're supposed to relax and 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 whatever else you know but you got people that's supposed to take care of you trying to take advantage of you and that's why i do what i do i want to be the voice so figuring stuff like this out like like a giant puzzle right like you're putting together all these pieces which a lot of people do puzzles for fun what yes. do you do for fun to wind down from what seems to be obviously very satisfying, but challenging profession, right? Finding a woman who's being taken advantage of in a Mm -hmm. nursing home. I mean, helping her has to be really satisfying, but it's also like, you know, this glimpse into humanity, which is not good, right? Somebody was totally stealing from her. Mm -hmm. So I don't wind down. I think how I, every, and that's a big problem with me. I'm in, I, my hands are in so many things in the community. Like I'm in Garland and I always tell people, cause I'm not from here. I'm from Chicago. Let me start there. I'm a, I'm a Midwestern. And uh, when I first came here, I started in Dallas because city, right? You want to stay in the city. And so, but I, Dallas wasn't for me. And I wound up buying a house. And for whatever reason, this house that I'm in kept calling me back three times. Three times I've seen this house. Mm-hmm. I didn't get it the first time or the second time. It was the third time. Oh, wow. And I, I, I tell people all the time, I didn't choose Garland. Garland chose me. I was looking everywhere for houses. For whatever reason, this house kept calling me back. So 
And I'm, I'm glad because Garland is such a great and phenomenal city. And so I'm only saying this because they not only accepted me and my profession, they have encouraged it. They have surrounded it. They have uh, just just so much love in the community with it. So I, I and me being me and the way I am, I give back. So I'm with Good Samaritan. I can volunteer, whatever that they need me to do. I'm there 100%. Operation, uh, what is it? Operation Frontline Warriors, 100%. I am there. I donate to the churches. I do safeties in the churches. Like I talk to the elders and explain to them how to, uh, when you go online, the things you can click and the things you can't click. Uh, the things you should click, the things you shouldn't click, things of that nature. Like, you know, um, what's the evil twin in emails or things of that nature. I just try to keep the elders safe because they are targeted. Mm. I work with um, with uh, some of the staff, with one of born in particular over at the DEA office. Uh, we work together, like bringing awareness for fentanyl, me and Elaine, bringing awareness to the fentanyl drug. Um, I did, like, it's just, I'm in the community so much that sometimes I don't have time for myself. So I did the citizenship with, uh, not citizenship, Lord, uh, the Citizen Academy with the DEA. I'm currently doing the Citizen Academy with GPD. And now I have the Citizen Academy coming up with the Secret Services. So I'm always in the know so that I can share the information with our community. This is what's going on. This is what we need to do. This is our new target. This is, you know, that, that that's what I do. So I'm in everything. And, and then I have Garland Leadership coming up. So the leadership is building leaders. So you sit at the table with the councils, the board members. Like, I just want to advance everything about investigation as possible because people have this perception with PIs that the only thing you're supposed to do is infidelity for whatever reason. When you There is a broad range of things you can do with these licenses. So, and that's why I do what I do. I want to make sure that I'm able to help who needs help. Everyone can't afford us. So. Well, Sharonda, <laughs> I love what you do. It's been like the fastest 25 minutes ever. Really? Yeah. Oh, 25 well. minutes. I know. I know. I you have so much. many good stories to tell. <laughs> and um, I love all that you're doing. Um, I think it's so interesting. Garland. I drove through Garland not too long ago and I Usually I'm I'm going somewhere and I'm in a hurry, but I happened to look up and I was like, man, <laughs> Garland has grown up. Yes, the trees that were planted initially when the homes were built are bigger mm -hmm. now. They're beautiful. Like it's 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 really growing up as a city and it feels ginormous compared mm -hmm. to other suburbs. Like it's so big, but um, it's just right there. And it's yeah. we're gonna it's hop, a skip and a jump away. It's it like, really it's is. It really is a great place. I love, I, I could not have picked a better city. There are so and many cities to choose. super diverse, which is yes! super cool as well. Yes. It's very yeah. diverse. Mm -hmm. yes. um, and we're Amazing food. We amazing ethnic together. food. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We do so stick good. together. And it's continually, it's continuously growing, growing, growing. Mm -hmm. We always look for ways to, to do more or to do better. or And we work together as a community. That's the one thing I love about this place. Well, you are an amazing advocate. I love all right. the work that you're doing. Thank you so much for being on the podcast with me. If people yeah. want to find you, how do they find you? Oh, sure. Just look for the logo. Uh, did you show my logo? Did I send you the logo? I don't think I ever nope, saw No, but I will. Ah, let me see if I have it. Can you see it? So you see that? What do you think that is? Um, this little logo. I don't know. Do There's a glare. Is? is it the dark web? I don't know. Can you see it now? No? No. Is it a... I can't tell. <laughs> it's an eye. It's an eye with... Uh, oh, it's an yes, eye. It is an eye. Can you see it now? I Oh, yeah. I can see it now. Now you can see it. It is an eye. And yeah. Can you see what's in the eye? Is it two little eyeballs? No. <laughs> so if you look closely... Here's a here's a woman head right here. Here's a woman head right here. And then right in the middle is a woman. 
Oh, how cool is that? I, I was supposed to be, it was supposed to be Linson's Angels, like Charlie's Angels. That's what I was going to do. I was going <laughs> to, I was going to have an investigation full of women. <laughs> That was the plan, <laughs> but not many women want to be in it from over here, and so that's what I ran into, and so, but that's what it was supposed to be. We were supposed to be the eye spies, and but yeah, it didn't turn out that so way. So you're private <laughs> EYE investigators. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That's what we are. Yes. Awesome. But uh, if well, you want to reach me, it's 844-I-GUARD-U. And Simple that's the that. letter I, not E Y E. I no. guard you. You, yeah, you. that's correct. <laughs> Have you guarded many people? You. Yes. Wow. Personally, I don't like the personal bodyguard. I did it twice. I really don't like it. Okay. It's too intense. It's too. My mind is always thinking, so I'm always thinking somebody's about to launch out. Somebody's somebody's looking the wrong way. So, so it's it's too much. It's too much. It's too much. Now, do. <laughs> I put on security uniforms and stand at a post or do a patrol. Yes, I, I will do that if I, if I don't have enough people. And I, we have over 70 employees. And sometimes you get those, it's just lazy. So I, I still put those boots on, put my, my duty belt on, and go out there and be a rent for a little while. I still do it. <laughs> well, thank you again for being with me today. I, sh- I appreciate your time, and I can't wait. Part of the what we're... As insurance agency, we get to circle back with our clients, like, mm-hmm. you know, every year when we check renewals or, you know, when people have changes. And so that was one of the things we wanted to do on the podcast is bring people back and be like, all right, how was your year? What'd mm-hmm. you do? What changed? How did you grow? So I can't wait to have you back and hear what, what you've be been ready. up to because <laughs> you're obviously in the middle of something. All of it. I'm telling you, there's a storm. I don't know what it is, but it's coming. All right. Well, thanks so much. You're very welcome. That's probably the first time anybody has explained the dark web to me in a way that I've understood. Usually I'm at insurance meetings about cyber insurance and somebody mentions the dark web and we all kind of look at each other and go, is that a place where you go? Is it like the black market? What is this thing? So, and it's pretty scary, but that is our insurance tie in this week, which is about cyber insurance. So, the FBI has reported there is a 240% increase in cyber incidences. And no cyber insurance does not create the incident, cyber helps protect what happens next. So, whether, whether you can't access your data, you lose your data, or you get that weirdo email from your vendor that says, Oh, hey, girl we had to change our bank. So when you send that check for whatever you just bought, will you send it to this bank account instead? But it's not your vendor and it's a hacker. And so once you send the money, it's gone unless you have cyber extortion fraud coverage. So it's really important to have. So ask your insurance agent, ask us about it. It's not that expensive, but you'll be glad you have it if you ever have an incident. Thanks so much for being with us today. Please connect with us at GiveAgencyDallas.com. We'd love to hear from you. We also have these cutie koozies that we made. So if you want one, drop us a line. Otherwise, we'll see you again next week. Maybe not in polka dots. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to double polka dot, but there you go. Have a good one.